and you are Chris. Chris, I'm also oh, yeah, that's on the team it. Here. Chris, yes, Chris. Chris, so, I wasn't sure if you'd forgotten then, or whether you were hoping I would, um, you know, just introduce myself. No, I was introducing you to introduce yourself. Okay, then. just checking. Yes, get with it. I am with it. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we we have uh, today we have Andy Kind speaking to us, and uh, we're thrilled about that. So uh, excited with what he will yeah. bring this morning, um, and we have communion together. Um, and I just want to burst Chris's balloon before he starts doing anything. There may be some Brentford supporters in the room. This is football, for those of you who are thinking, what are we talking about? And uh, Chris, unfortunately, supports Wolverhampton Wanderers, who apparently won yesterday. So the debate was whether we allowed Chris to come to communion this morning or not <laughs> here. Um, uh, do we welcome Wolverhampton Wanderers supporters here? We do. Okay, we welcome them. All right. Wolves, are we? We do. Chris, why don't you pray for us? Forgive Mark. He knows not what he's doing. Uh, thank you. For, uh, well, pray properly, Chris. Come on. Lord, thank you so much for this new day because it's a good day because you're with us. And I pray your blessing on us as we gather together as the whole family here at St. Paul's. I pray that we would just get to know you better, get to know one another better, and would find joy in your presence. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, everyone. We're going to worship uh, together. Sing Father of Kindness. Dear Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You bore me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help inside me. Lord, I can't help but sing. You have broken every curse Blessed Redeemer You have set this captive Is your faithfulness and I will rest in your promises, my confidence. Oh, is your faithfulness and I will rest in your promises, my confidence. Is your faithfulness? Oh, 
is our yes and amen faithful you are faithful forever you will be faithful you are and all your promises are yes and amen all your promises are yes and amen. We're going to sing our family song together now, and it looks like Rebecca's going to be doing the actions again. And um, we're going to sing Trust the Lord together. So if you'd like to come up the front, any kids who'd like to come up the front and join with the actions, uh, we're going to do this song together now. Just the Lord with all your heart, all your heart, trust the Lord. Jesus is our King, we're gonna dance, we're gonna sing, yes, He's our friend, and He's here for us forever. He will never let us go, what a love story to show and tell the world, He's amazing and forever. is our king we're gonna dance we're gonna sing yes he's our friend and he's here for us forever he will never let us go what a love story to show and tell the world he's amazing and forever trust the lord with all your heart all your heart trust the lord trust the lord Trust Him in the rain, trust Him with tomorrow, trust Him with today, trust Him in the good time, trust Him in the rain, trust Him with tomorrow, trust Him with today, trust Him in the good time, trust Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, David. I'm going to pray for our children and young people, and they're going to go to their groups, and we are going to remain standing and continue in worship together. Let's just pray for our young people and children. Father, thank you. Thank you for each and every young person and child in this room. Thank you for your life in them, and thank you for the team that are helping to share something of the good news that's found in Jesus today with each and every one of them. We pray your blessing and presence in each and every room where they meet. And we ask in your precious name, amen. Go and have a great time, guys. We'll see you at the end of the service. And as they go, let's continue in worship together.
come to you. You are good. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the i uh-huh. 
fix our eyes on you. Holy, holy God. Unfailing love. You're the source of all things. We return to you. We return to you again Cause holy There is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are and feel brightly in the darkness because we know the darkness cannot overcome it 
Jesus, you said about us, your church, that we are the light of the world. That the lamp on a hill, we don't hide it, but we allow your light to shine through us. And, and Father, part of that is that we pray. We pray your kingdom come in our world. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, just at a glance at the news at the moment, and these are just the things that we see and are shown. Lord, we pray for the nation of Afghanistan. Pray, Father, for the oppressive regime there to change. We pray, Father, for those who are oppressed especially, for women, children, for marginalised groups. We pray, Father, your kingdom come. For Yemen still undergoing a civil war that's fought by two groups that aren't even part of that nation. Lord, we pray in that place, bring peace and protect the most at risk. The tensions around Ukraine, Lord, pray, Father, for sovereign and divine intervention. And again, protect those who are most in need and most vulnerable. Lord Jesus, we pray for the... Um, the human caused climate emergencies around the world that we know of. Father, we pray as the sea levels are rising, as temperatures are growing, we pray as there are wildfires in California again. Father, as there are droughts and famines coming, Father, we pray, help us, your people, to be the light in the darkness. We pray, Father, give us wisdom in how we, particularly in the wealthy West, Lord, are able to do something to make a difference for the majority world, Lord. Let your kingdom come. Father, we pray for our own nation and Lord, all of the controversy surrounding our political parties and Westminster, all of the noise that is happening there. Father, we pray for those, Father, who are suffering so much through the Cost, rise of cost of living and the increased heating, um, increased fuel bills and decrease in, um, uh, in wages. Father, we pray that your kingdom would come. Father, we pray you give wisdom to every government minister and every politician and every civil servant and every um, person working to make the best for our country, that, Father, they would first and foremost consider those most in need. Father, would you help us as a nation to have an economy that, um, that, that looks after the poorest as well as making money uh, that we might be able to do what we can do. Father, in our nation, your kingdom come. And Father, help us not to be people who react and, and begin to hate, but Lord, to be people who love our neighbour as ourselves and to love those we disagree with. Forgive me, Lord, where I get that wrong. And we pray personally for ourselves and our families, for those we love, for those we have in our hearts, the sick, the worried, the anxious, the fearful. And Lord, where that is even ourselves, we pray your kingdom come. Pray for your peace, the perfect peace to guard our hearts and minds. Pray for your provision where we struggle financially for your strength where we are battling and pray in our families in our community your kingdom come your will be done and we pray all these prayers in the name of our saviour jesus who loves us amen thank you so much chris do you know do you take a seat do you know there's a that's lovely thank you David and the team, just such lovely worship. Uh, there's a great opportunity this week to continue in that place of deep worship on uh, Tuesday. Yeah. We've got Hungry on Tuesday evening. Um, hungry, if you don't know what it is, is an hour. Uh, we have every month on a Tuesday evening where we just gather for extended worship. We don't have a, an agenda, as it were, an order of service, but we just want to spend time seeking God individually and together. Um, and it's a great place to come if you're just wanting that space to be with God. Um, whether you've been before or not, you're really welcome to come. It starts at 8 o'clock. Uh, just come in the main entrance of, um, of church. It'll either be in the foyer or in the main church. depends on numbers. Um, but um, we look forward to welcoming you there. And just to say beforehand, if you're a young adult, or if you know of those who are young adults, there'll be food served beforehand, a meal for anyone in that age category um, who'd like to come. So do spread the word let people know 
what time is 6 the meal? 6.30. 6 6.30, thank you. 6.30 for the meal and 8 o'clock for hungry. So I'd love to see you there for that. And um, there's also another opportunity to gather for food. So if you are new or relatively new to uh, the St. Paul's family and would like to meet some new people and uh, hear a little bit more about us as a church, you are invited to dinner tomorrow night at 7.30. We meet in the foyer. Um, it's a lovely opportunity to hear a little bit about the wider ministry that we have and um, to meet some life group leaders and some of the tea staff team and just to catch up on where we are. So we would love you to come. It's a really great way to be part of the story of the church, just to hear the story of the church. So tomorrow night, 7.30, please feel invited. And um, if you'd like to come, uh, you can sign up at the welcome desk today or please speak to myself or Chris afterwards. We'd love to hear from you. So if you're a young adult, you can come for dinner on Tuesday nights. If you're a new young adult, you can come for dinner on uh, Monday night as well. And if you're a new young adult who'd like to do Alpha, you can come to dinner Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. That's quite amazing, really. It's brilliant. I'm, I'm, under, I'm, I'm in my late 30s, 42, so I can think technically just about make... No, I can't. I'm not new. I'm not a young adult. And I've done Alpha a million times, so maybe not for me. But I'd love to invite you to Alpha on Wednesday. Let's get to the point, shall we? Um, so Alpha, if you don't know what Alpha is, it's um, a series of um, eight evenings where there is great food, uh, a presentation about an aspect of Christian faith, and uh, more importantly, a great chance to discuss in groups and ask the questions you'd love to ask. And it's for people who are thinking about faith, people who've been, been, in, been had Christian faith forever but want to re-explore that or rethink it. And basically, it's for anyone if you would like to join. Um, Tim Radcliffe will be leading it with a great team. Um, starts this Wednesday, the 26th at 7.30 p.m. Um, if you want to come, do sign up beforehand. Um, and uh, we'd love to see you there. So that starts this Wednesday night, 7.30, Alpha. Fantastic opportunity. And um, uh, there's a, a lovely opportunity as well. If you are looking for a place to serve within the church, I don't know if you know, but we run a language school every week. And um, Dominic Jury, who heads that up for us, has asked that we give that a little bit of a plug. He said we've got some uh, spaces for some more volunteers to help in the language school. So if you'd like to know more about that, please do just email office at St. Paul's Ealing and we'll send your email on to Dominic. We'd love to uh, make sure that language school is equipped. We have about 100 students in it. So those are mainly refugees or those imprisoned in the area at home because they can't speak English. And uh, helping them to learn English gives them the, uh, the, 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 the ability that they need to get a job and start to live life in our country. So uh, it's a brilliant ministry and uh, uh, a great opportunity to engage. And tonight, love you to pray for Ben's, Ben and Lydia Strain. Uh, ben is being inducted as vicar of uh, Holy Trinity, uh, Sydenham with Forest Hill, six o'clock tonight. Um, there'll be a group of us going to support him. Um, um, some of you may well be going as well. We'll see you there. Um, but pray for them tonight, 6 o'clock, as they're inducted there and start their ministry properly there tomorrow. We have a reading. And is that right? It is. Yeah, and good, Phil that's good, is good job you're here. Phil, come and lead us, please, friend. And then Andy Kind is going to come and speak for us this morning. Thanks, Phil. The reading this morning is taken from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. May your way may be known on earth, your saving power among the nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Good morning, everybody. 
I shall start my timer. The, I did the, Mark said to me last night, having already written the talk, he said, are you okay to speak for 16 to 18 minutes? I thought, well, no, not really. The talk is 45 minutes. So I've had to write a different one. Um, he said, so this morning, the nine, uh, nine o'clock one ran at 18 minutes and 20 seconds. So it was quite good. 20 seconds over, though. So Mark has said, if it happens again, after the service, I will be taken to a place where I will be executed. So, you know, the pressure's on. I'm already 34 seconds in. I haven't said anything yet. Um, I want to say what a privilege and a pleasure it is to be with you all. Um, I had a lovely time last night at the comedy night. Um, I hope at least 75% of you did as well. Um, if you weren't here, well, no Christmas cards from me to you this year. Sorry about that. But it's a real joy, and it resonates with that line from um, the wondrous cross, joy and sorrow flow mingled down. And it's one of these places where you come and you preach and you serve, where you have the joy of being with an amazing community and the sorrow of thinking, oh, this isn't my church, I've got to go, I've got to go home after this. So um, I resonate with that, the joy and the sorrow of, of being with you and knowing that it's just for a, a short while, one minute twenty, and I haven't started the talk yet. So uh, again, the tension's on, isn't it? The pressure's on. Um, but I was saying to Mark and Lindsay last night uh, over a game of darts and, um, and a tankard of ale, uh, yeah. <laughs> that as I, was looking, as I was looking back at some of the preachers that I might give, pre-pandemic, the preachers I gave pre-pandemic, I am slightly embarrassed by because they were flirting on the boundaries of, of cliché. It wasn't that they weren't true, but they were trite and crass and flippant. I, I've had to repent of, of the way, not necessarily what I said, but the way I preached. My aim was always to give, because I'm a comedian, was to give people that fluffy feeling of well-being. People would come and say, oh, I really enjoyed that. Thanks for that. Oh, it set me up for the week. I do want you to be set up for the week, but... I don't need you to have a fluffy feeling because the world doesn't have a fluffy feeling at the moment. And you know, as Christians, we have a real story of hope and comfort to offer people. But in order to do that effectively, we need to dispense with cliche. And in my life, and I think in the life of the church in the UK and in the West, there's been too much cliche. Things that sound good and sound encouraging but are too superficial and actually ultimately unhelpful. So the call this morning is to dispense with cliché and to go out into the world to offer the real comfort that we have. The God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort that we have received. 2 Corinthians. We're not saying, what I'm about to say is, is not to say that everything I've previously done is wrong. It's not to say that some of these phrases I'm going to quote are wrong. It's just that there's a better story. There's a better story, a real story of hope and joy and comfort and freedom that we've got to offer and we want to administer it faithfully. And the way to do that, again, is, is, to, is to call it as it is. So the slogans I hear that have seeped into the church, such as um, your breakthroughs around the corner, God's got someone better for you. God just wants you to be happy. These things aren't necessarily automatically false. But they're not, they're not guaranteed truths. And what they are is, is Disney and Hollywood. One day my prince will come. Somewhere over the rainbow. It's Hollywood, it's romantic comedy where you always get the happy ending in the neat package. But you, you know from the last two years of your life that happy endings don't come in neat packages. You have probably experienced, as I have, more trauma in the last two years than you thought was possible for whatever reason. You've probably felt more wounded than you thought was possible. You've probably questioned your theology and your faith more than you have in the past. James 1.3 says, we know that the testing of our faith produces perseverance. So it's okay, you know. 
once we, once we look at the gospel and we look in the Bible, the answers are there. We've got good answers to give, but we need to avoid banality and triteness and flippancy because that's not really what people want to hear. And I think sometimes when we're saying things like, you know, your breakthrough's around the corner, what we want to do is make ourselves feel better, <laughs> that we've helped in some way. We've encouraged someone, oh, it was great, I said the breakthrough's around the corner. It makes us feel like we're prophetic and helpful. But you don't know if someone's breakthrough's around the corner. Who's told, who's told you that? God doesn't speak in cliches, he hasn't told you that. There's real hope. The psalmist says, lift your eyes to the hills. That's where your help comes from. Which is not the same as run to the hills. Don't run to the hills. Lift your eyes to the hills, because that's where your help is coming from. God just wants you to be happy is something I hear a lot. And it's, um, it's not that it's totally false. I would say it's profoundly true, but it's superficially false and really unhelpful. Because if God just wants you to be happy, if life is simply about happiness, then God is really, really bad at his job. He needs to be given a P45 because he has failed. He's miserably bad at it. Lots of people in this room are not feeling happy. But that, you know what, that's okay. It's not the end game, but it's, it's okay to not feel happy because happiness is one ingredient in a spiritual diet. Happiness is pure sugar. You can't live off pure sugar, despite what seven-year-olds want you to believe. Let me give you another example. People say, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic for you. Rebecca, I'm optimistic for you that you won't have to do the actions again. (laughs) It doesn't mean anything, though. Optimistic, what does it mean? It means I've got a good feeling about it. Well, my, (laughs) my feelings are based on how much coffee I've had. I've had a whole cafetiere this morning. That's why I'm optimistic. I feel good. Optimism is a pale imitation of hope. This is what I'm saying. Optimism is a pale imitation of hope. There were Brentford fans going to the ground yesterday, optimistic that they would beat Wolves. Optimism is based on feelings, and feelings are transient. Hope is based on Christ. So as Christians, we don't need to be optimistic. We need to be hopeful. Because it's based on Christ. It's rooted in a person. And do you know what? When it comes to offering real comfort in suffering, the gospel is it's the only show in town. What I would never say is that there isn't truth in other worldviews. What I'm saying is those truths don't go far enough, particularly when it comes to offering comfort in real suffering. In a lot of Eastern thought, suffering is described as maya, which just means illusion. But you don't need me to tell you that your suffering, your pain isn't illusion. Suffering is not an urban myth. And the point in these Eastern religions and theologies, philosophies, is not to engage with suffering, to grow through it, but to detach from it. That doesn't help anybody. What we see at the cross is a different and unique story of God coming to find us in our suffering, calling it as it is, and then doing something about it taking our suffering upon himself, taking it into the ground, leaving it dead, and then giving us new life through resurrection. Which doesn't mean that pain and death aren't real. It just means that they don't get to win. They don't have the final say. They're not the end game. They're not the end of the story. Suffering is not Maya. It's not illusion. It's real But more real than that is the love of God, who is with us in our suffering, really with us, suffering with us and for us. That's what compassion means, to suffer with. No other God would bruise him or herself for you. Jesus dies and offers to walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death and promises us that there is, there is a place where every tear will be wiped dry. But the journey to that starts now. Fullness of life starts now. 
His promises are not somewhere over the rainbow. They are yes and amen here, now. The stuff that you can experience now is real, and that's the stuff that will go on forever. You won't have your car forever, but you can keep peace and joy forever. You can have them now and keep them forever. These are the things that people are, are desperate for. I was so privileged to um, watch the interview that Mark did with Chris last week about, about Nell. And one of the brilliant things that Mark said was, how can we speak to you, Chris? How can we uh, approach you? And that was great, because... You all know that the thing not to do is to come up and say your breakthrough's around the corner. Life's too short to be unhappy. We're here for a good time, not a long time. These are, these are not messages of hope. They're slogans. They're car bumper stickers. Sometimes as Christians, we need to just shut up and just sit and be and embrace people. We'll come back to that, but if life is about pursuing happiness, then it's about fleeing from pain. If life is purely about personal happiness, then it's about pursuing pain. And pain starts with boredom. I experience boredom as pain. If God's desire for you is just to have happiness, then anything that is painful to you can't be God's will for you, and so you should flee from it. But that's not helpful. You'll never go to a funeral. You'll never help a friend out financially. God doesn't just want you to be happy. He wants you to be sad when people are sad. If you're, not, if you're not sad, how can you develop empathy? God wants you to be sacrificial rather than happy sometimes. If you're not sacrificial, how can you bless others with the blessings that you've been given? God wants you to be humble and humbled sometimes rather than happy. Because if you're not Humbled, how can you repent? How can you change your mind about things? How can you say sorry to people? How can you accept other people's forgiveness and apologies? Happiness is great as far as it goes. It just doesn't go far enough. It's not the end game. It's one ingredient in a wide spiritual diet that God has for us, which includes sorrow and joy and pain and lots of other things. And I think what is important is to understand what we mean by what we say. So happiness creates pictures in different people's minds. So what we're not going I'm not saying what I'm not saying is that we should go out and say God doesn't want you to be happy. It's we need to define what we mean. So for instance, because words change their meaning over time, don't they? So um, ambidextrous, the word ambidextrous, we we know that to mean someone who's good at painting or drawing with both hands, someone who's equally adept at using both hands. In the 16th and 17th century, an ambidexter was somebody who took bribes from both sides in a legal dispute. But if I found out that Rebecca was ambidextrous, I wouldn't say, oh, you, you shouldn't be taking bribes, Rebecca. Meanings of words change, so we have to just be clear on what we mean by what we say. And when the Bible uses the word happy, Psalms um, 97 verse 12, for instance, it says, may all who are godly be happy. May all who are godly be happy. Most translations de describe that as rejoice. May all who are happy rejoice. And that's where we can really wholeheartedly agree. Rejoice, taking joy. Which again, is not based on circumstances or feelings or a vague hope of what's over the horizon. But on what is guaranteed in the presence of God. It's, a, it's about the source of these things. The source of joy is God. The source of happiness is circumstances, external circumstances. So does God want you to be happy? Does God want you to rejoice? Yes. Life's too short not to rejoice. In his presence is fullness of joy. Whatever is going on externally, Optimism is based on circumstance. Hope is based on Christ. Happiness is based on external factors. Joy is based on that knowledge that he is with you and for you and will never condemn you. How we meet suffering depends on what we think the purpose of life is. 
Some of us become addicted to happiness. And if there is no God, then I agree that, you know, adrenaline and endorphins are the best thing out there, and so we should just go after them. But <laughs> I think there's a, there's, a better, there's a better story. If we believe that, if you become addicted to happiness, then God is just your dealer. If happiness is your drug, then God is your dealer, and not your father, and not your Lord and your saviour. If we believe that the point of life is just to be happy, just to go after happiness, that when suffering comes, we will either believe that God doesn't like us very much or that he's not real at all. Usually one followed by the other, and I've seen that happen a lot. I've seen that happen a lot. I don't know how to cope with this. Why would God allow this to happen to me? He doesn't love me. He's not real. I've seen it happen. If, however, we believe that the point of life is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Westminster Catechism. To glorify God and enjoy him forever. Then we will find that no matter what happens, no matter what befalls us, we will find and know to be true that there is neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, any power that can separate us from the love of God. The greatest love story of all time. That one place in the universe where you are really held and really known and really loved, even as you are really known. And that's where the comfort comes from. When people are in pain, they don't need slogans. They don't need slogans. They don't need bumper stickers. They need real messages of hope. And friends, you have it. You carry it. And you might say, oh, I'm feeling pretty wounded at the moment. I know I am. But that's, that's the deal. That's, that's part of the Christian storyline. The Lord himself took wounds. By his wounds, we find healing. When I'm in trouble, I don't go to the people who've never been wounded. I don't go to the people with unblemished skin and porcelain smiles who say, isn't life great? The time for that is over and done with, my friends. I go to the people who have been wounded, badly wounded, and have stood, have held the line, have refused to break. Persecuted but not abandoned. Squeezed but not crushed. Not in despair. Maybe the most you can say about your faith is that you've refused to break over the last two years. I want to congratulate you on that. Because that's good enough. Hold the line. Hold the line. Because the story of Christianity is not about vague optimistic hopes God's primary aim isn't to make new things but to make things new it's not to make new things to cast to direct people to just keep moving forward put everything behind you tomorrow's a, a, another day or something will come along but to make things new to come back to the source of joy and hope and love, resurrection, redemption, restoration, reconciliation, repentance. Selwyn Hughes in Every Day with Jesus said that God loves to do three things. He reveals, reverses, and restores. And it's all about coming back to, coming back to the source. Because when you come back to the source, you don't need to leave the source. You don't need to run for the hills. You don't need to uh, abandon people. You don't need to chase after experiences. You can just sit. And then when people come in need of comfort, you can sit with them. Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. You are an amazing community. I don't need to be told to discern that. It's obvious. The the key to an amazing community is to be able to not just rejoice with those who rejoice and party with those who are partying, but to weep and mourn with those who weep and mourn for as long as they need to mourn and as much as they need to mourn. That is the key to Christian community. And that is, 
That, that's the gold standard for us as Christians. I am now massively over, so I'm going to finish. But I have finished. It's not that God wants you to live in pain. But there is purpose in pain. And we do know the fullness of life starts now. We can offer people a hope and a joy and a love that's not based on their external factors or circumstances. And we also know that somewhere in those hills is an ultimate, eternal, happy ending that's coming for us where every tear will be wiped dry and there will be no more sorrow. There will just be joy. Life is too short not to rejoice, my friends. Happiness is not good enough. Amen. Friends, can I invite us to stand? We all have a story um, in life. We all know joy and pain and often at the same time as Andy said you know we rejoice with those who rejoice weep with those who reap often at the same time in the same room because that's what life is like um, and I just want to pray now and just ask God by his spirit to fill us afresh to remind us of his presence with us and just to see what God might want to do in the room this morning so just encourage you if you'd like to hold out your hands just saying to God I'm open open hands open to you I'm ready for you to receive the good things you have to give me and Father thank you that you are good all the time and Lord that you the good God walks with us in every season of life and I pray this morning the spirit of the living God fall afresh upon us your people because, Lord, we need to know you're here. We need to be reminded that you love us. And we need to be strengthened inwardly. Come. And let's just wait for a moment and pray our prayers, asking God for his presence. Increase your presence now. Increase your presence now. Sometimes it's not the big tragedies and events that knock us off. It's the disappointment, the ongoing disappointment that we find hard to recover. And there's a verse in Romans 5 which says this, and hope does not disappoint us. For he has poured his love into our hearts by his Holy Spirit. You cannot separate hope and the love of God. And so, Lord, we pray by your Spirit, you'd pour your love into our hearts and help us when we deal with disappointment. Come, Holy Spirit. And if that's you, particularly, if you think, Do you know what, I am wrestling with disappointment this morning. Things have not worked out how they should have or I hoped they would have. Just love you just to place a hand on your heart and just ask God again that he'd fill you with his love. Fill you with his love. We're disappointed with ourselves, with others, with circumstances, with hopes and dreams. But you know, God is at work in all of it. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And there's a word I feel for some of us today and God wants us to know he is not disappointed with us. He is not disappointed with me or with you. He rejoices over you with singing. Thank you, Lord. Just a moment, let's just pray that and wait on God for that. Be still.
this morning as we come to the, the table for the family meal. This is a meal that's about faith, hope and love. It's faith in that every time we take bread and wine, we put our trust in Jesus and what he's done for us. And we don't have to feel it, we just do it because faith is always an action. It's hope because it reminds us that we do this until he comes again and one day he will make all things new, even you and me. And it's all about love. This is how we know what love is, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. So there'll be some words that appear on the screen and anything in bold is for us to say together as we journey together as the family of God to this meal. Praise and thanks to you, Father in heaven. On the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread and wine. He gave thanks and said, this is my body given for you. And this is my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. And together we say, Christ has died, but Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts and remember his sacrifice made once for all on the cross. Feed us with his body and blood that we may live and grow in him. Through him we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. And together, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So friends, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him with your, in your hearts with, by faith, with thanksgiving. If those who are helping to give out communion could come forward. And just to say, if you're new or visiting, have not taken communion with us before, firstly, you are welcome to come. Remember, this is about faith, hope, and love. And um, you're welcome to come. There'll be a wafer at the front and then a little glass of uh, juice or wine um, that will, you can have. And those empty glasses will just go in the baskets to my left and right. We do this in the context of worship. Uh, there's no one going to usher you up, but we'll just come from the front uh, at first. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the water, come to the water, come all you broken hearted, come to the Father, come to the Father, unfailing love. He's waiting for us here at the water. Come to the water, come to the water, come all you broken hearted, come to the Father, come to the Father, unfailing love, he's waiting for 
Find your rest, find your freedom Here at the water, here at the water The arms of grace, eyes of mercy This is our Father, this is our Father Unfailing love He's waiting for us. Come to the water. There's always enough unfailing love. He's waiting for us here at the water. He's here at the water. God, you are here with us. Tender love and mercy never fail. God, you are here with us. We hold on to your love. Yeah, God, you are. my shepherd I shall not want Jesus thank you that you have done it all that on the cross you gave of your life your body broken your blood shed that we might be forgiven and go free and be made whole and so Lord I pray for us as we've come to celebrate this meal both for some of us with sadness in our hearts but also knowing that in your presence as Andy said there is fullness of joy that Lord you give to us everything we need and we're going to sing now our final song. So I'd just love to invite you to stand if you aren't already. Um, and after that, Mark will pray God's blessing upon us. Who, oh Lord, could save themselves, their own soul could heal. As our shame was deeper than sea, your grace is deeper still. You alone can rescue, you alone can save, and you alone can lift us from the grave. It's you the grave. 
Thank you for being here today. Thank you for uh, journeying with us. Thank you to Andy for speaking. It's great to have you here. Um, I want to pray God's blessing on us as we go. But just to say, um, if you would like to give this morning, there's a card machine at the back and a basket. If you are new or visiting, please do go to the welcome desk. We'd love to give you a welcome pack and connect with you and hopefully invite you for dinner tomorrow night. Let's ask God's blessing on us. Father, whatever's going on in our lives at the moment, we know we need your blessing. And so the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, with your families, with your friends, and with your loved ones this day and for always. Amen. Amen. Don't rush off, friends. There's tea and coffee. Do stay and connect together. Thank you for being here today.